I, I wasn't sure if that was my cue. <laughs> I'm Pastor Doug. Good morning. Good morning, Doug. Good morning. I am so glad to be here. This is my second time here. This is a great place to worship. You guys are always so friendly. Our reading today is going to be from Romans chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. I know I do it a little bit different than Pastor Charles. I like to do the reading and then get into the sermon because I still bring in other scripture. So I'm going to do the reading first. I can't read from all the way down there. There, that's better. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to, speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did not show his righteousness because of his divine forbearance he had passed over to sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes a boasting? Is it excluded? By what law? By that of works? No, but the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Here ends the reading. So let's go back to verse 23 for a second. I did pre-warn her I might do that. This verse is real key for Martin Luther. It's real key for us. Since all have sinned and fall short, short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. By how? By Christ. Not by our works, but by Christ. Who put Christ forward for us? God did, as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. In other words, this effectiveness only happens in our faith. He did this to show his righteousness because of his divine forbearance he had passed over of the previously committed sins. That is really important. Previously committed. Not the ones you're going to commit, but those are forgiven too, but all your previous sins, all my previous sins have been forgiven. Now, Faith. You heard that. Faith is the peace. Hold on to that and think about that. It's your faith in what God has done that you receive that forgiveness. I want you to hold on and just think about that for a while. And I'm going to go back in time. Today's Reformation Day, right? That's why we're all wearing red. It's either that or it's Pentecost. So tell me which it is. But even Pentecost was a way of a reformation. Now we'll go back even further. And I'll come back to Pentecost. God has been reforming us a long time. Amen. A long time. He took the scoundrel, Jacob, a trickster, and he formed a nation through him with all his sons. We know one of them, right? That guy Joseph, remember him in the Bible? How many of you remember reading him when you were growing up? Okay, how many of you saw the play about Joseph? Okay, good. 
Because that was my first introduction to who Joseph was. My wife said, oh, my mom has bought these tickets and we're going to go see this play called Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. I said, what is that about? Well, it's about a Bible character. Oh, I want nothing to do with that. I did not grow up in the church. I did not grow up in the church. Yeah, well, God had something else to say about that. <laughs> it gave me my first taste of a story that I didn't know. And the amazing things that God can do, even with that scoundrel making, having made Joseph. And that scoundrel who wrestled with God was used for God's good, and he was changed, he was reformed. Joseph, through God, helped reform others that he contacted. God is always the one, the actor, the doing things. Should have gone back a little bit further, but you remember that drunkard? You know him, he built a boat. God used that drunk, changed that drunk, and built a boat for people and animals to live together. God is the actor, always. What about that murderer? Remember that murderer that, that led God's people out into the wilderness? Anybody know his name? Yeah, Moses, a murderer. God said, I'm going to use this murderer, and I'm going to change him to change my people. Reforming. Reformation. Reforming. God continually to reform. God says, you know what? I'm not done. Because people aren't getting it. So I'm going to have to reform some minds again. I'm going to come down as my son. In human flesh. I'm going to show people a better way. And I'm going to reform what they think about those laws. Laws are good. In fact, they're so good that before Jesus died, he says, I give you a new commandment. Anybody know what it was? It was the most difficult, yet the most easy, simple law. And it supersedes all the other laws because Jesus fulfilled the other laws and the commandments. John 13, 34, he says, I give you a new commandment. To love one another as I first loved you. Don't have to like them. But Jesus said we do have to love them. No matter what. No matter what. So that little thing about faith. Martin Luther had this to say about faith. It's not yours. It is not your faith. We often hear people say, well, you have to have faith. Yes. You need to grow your faith. I can't grow it. And if we think we can grow it, then we have a different problem. You ever heard some uh, different congregations, different groups of people say, you must accept Christ to, to begin your new life? Anybody heard that? Well, if you're accepting Christ, that's having faith, and you're doing what? The work. Oh, is that works righteousness that we just read about? Because if you believe you're growing the faith, that's problematic. But don't, don't worry, Luther tells us that God, through the Holy Spirit, imparts you with the faith necessary to believe in Jesus Christ. So it's not yours. It's God imparting the faith upon us. Again, who's doing the work? God is doing the work. The only thing that we have to do is not reject what has happened. We are all sinners, and we're only justified by God and God's love for us. God's love for us in Jesus. That is what Luther's Reformation was about. 
to understand that we are loved, period, in Jesus Christ. Apart from that, there is no other way to be forgiven. God is the actor reforming us through God's love for us in Jesus. Paul writes to the Galatians to keep them grounded in the gospel of Jesus because they started going off into different gospels. So that's what really the book of Galatians is about is Paul writing to the churches that he helped found and is like, what are you people doing? There's only one gospel, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of God handed down through Jesus to change God's people. To change God's people. God justifies us in Jesus through our faith imparted through us by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, even our own faith is not ours, but it's been freely given to us just as God's grace and mercy is freely given to us. Reformation, ever reforming. Ever reforming. That happens to be a tagline for an idea that I have. Ever reforming. Now, some of you may have heard me say this last time I was here, not up here, but just in conversation. I love beer. Luther and I would have gotten along great. He loved beer, too. He loved Katerina's beer even better because then he didn't have to make it. <laughs> he writes letters to her. Oh, the beer and the wine out here is pretty good on his going around the countryside, but can't wait to get back to yours. Ever reforming comes, that thought of hearing that comes for me in confessional spirits. Don't take that name. I have it. It's registered already. Confessionalspirits.com for a microbrew, and its tagline is ever reforming small batches that you'll confess that you want more of. But ever reforming, because I don't believe in having a one set recipe. It's about the same way. But the Holy Spirit can take hold and change us. God comes down as God's son to change us. Martin Luther saw the reality of what was going on in the church. His idea was not to break the church. He was appalled that people would say, I'm Lutheran. He'd be rolling around right now. Lutherans, I don't want anybody calling themselves after me. I wanted to reform the church. And God sent the messages to him to reform the church. It wasn't heard that way. They tried to reform Martin Luther by killing him. He was not the first one to come up with the idea of reforming the Roman Catholic Church. Anybody think he was the very first and it just took? Whew. That's good. Do you know what made it possible? Besides God, there was an invention that happened in Germany. Anybody know what it is? Yeah. The word got out. The word that Martin Luther was studying of the word got out there. Here's the irony. That Gutenberg Press, you know what it was originally used for? Printing up indulgences. The Roman Catholic Church, that's one of the things he didn't like, was the indulgences. And that same printing press, that invention that was printing up those indulgences, was now used to reform the church. You never know what God can use to reform. Moses, Noah, Jacob, Joseph, Jesus, you. We are all reformers. We are all able to reform. 
this Lutheran body that we call the ELCA is continually reforming, ever reforming. But all reformations need to be grounded in one thing. Does it bring life? Because the gospel brings life. And it doesn't bring life. And it's not from above. Because the gospel is from above and brings life. Our reformations, our reforming, must bring life. So in 2009, anybody know what happened in 2009? A lot of churches separated from the ELCA. Not as many as some predicted. All over a sexuality statement. Reforming. Reforming. Because God has continued to speak. God does not change, but continues to speak to us. That sexuality statement was several pages long, and there was a paragraph that dealt with homosexuality. A paragraph. It said, love everyone. That's essentially what it said. Love everyone. Embrace who God made them to be. Some of you may not agree with that statement. You may not agree with the ordination of, of gays, lesbians, transgender. Guess what? It's okay. God loves us as we are. God will keep working on us. God will keep changing us. The Reformation continues and continues. Today, Crossroads is reforming isn't it? It's changing, reforming. It's not that things are bad. Things change. God's behind change. If we can embrace the change, God will take us in amazing places. Change is scary. How many Lutherans does it take to change a light bulb? What do you mean change a light bulb? My great-great-grandmother gave that light bulb. <laughs> but we can change. If we're open to the possibilities, just loving, loving one another as he first loved us. I am currently without a call. My congregation I was at changed. There wasn't any more money to have a full-time pastor. And at first, I was angry. Then disappointed. Times of sadness for my wife and I. And wondering, how are we going to make it? God, you called me into this ministry awfully late in my life. You changed me. How dare you do this? And I did a lot of praying. Don't we pray a lot when things aren't going good? It's kind of like they, like they say there's no atheists in foxholes. They're starting to pray. That connection. I did a lot of praying. And God has been changing me, reforming me. I don't know if you know this. I'm going to give you a secret. Pastors are not real good at prayer. For their own prayer life, they are not real good at prayer. Do you believe me? Yes, it's true. And I've been terrible about my prayer life. So it changed. I started praying a lot more. First, it was about get me another call. I want to be, I'm worried. There's not money coming in. I need to do something to pay the bills. Guess what? The bills are getting paid. Everything's okay. 
And the prayers started to change. I did a lot of praying about this sermon. And every night when I go to bed, I ask for peace and rest. And I ask for God to speak to me. Allow me to remember what God has said and to apply it to my life. And I asked if I were to die in the night to take care of my family. And Jesus picked me up and bring me into heaven. God reforming me. So I began to pray more and more. And we have a better connection now. God will change you. God will reform you. As God reformed Martin and Noah and Jacob and Moses, God will reform you together corporately and individually. That's reformation. It's more than just what happened in the 1500s. It's about changing us as a whole. And it starts with that simple commandment that Jesus says. The one that supersedes everything. From John 13, 34, in case you didn't write that down. Love one another as I first loved you. Love one another. And how? As I first loved you, then reformation begins over and over and over. Amen.